Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Without further ado, returning to my reading of Dracula as read by Lord Naren White. However, we shall see. I will tell you of my little plans when we meet. I have just had a few hurried lines from Jonathan from Transylvania. He is well, and will be returning in about a week. I am longing to hear all his news. It must be nice to see strange countries. I wonder if we, I mean Jonathan and I, shall ever see them together. There is the ten o'clock bell ringing. Goodbye, your loving Mina. Tell me all the news when you write. You have not told me anything for a long time. I hear rumors and especially of a tall, handsome, curly-haired man. Letter, Lucy Westerna, Westenra, Lucy Westenra, to Mina Murray. 17 Chatham Street, Wednesday. My dearest Mina, I must say you tax me very unfairly with being a bad correspondent. I wrote you twice since we parted, and your last letter was only your second. Besides, I have nothing to tell you. There is really nothing to interest you. Town is very pleasant just now, and we go a great deal to picture galleries and for walks and rides in the park. As to the tall, curly-haired man, I suppose the one who was with me at the last pop, someone has evidently been telling tales. That was Mr. Homewood. He often comes to see us and he and Mamma get on very well together. They have so many things about in common. We met some time ago a man that would do, that would just do for you, if you were not already engaged to Jonathan. He is an excellent party, being handsome, well off, and of good birth. He is a doctor and really clever. Just fancy. He is only nine and twenty, and he has an immense lunatic asylum, all under his own care. Mr. Homewood introduced him to me, and he called here to see us, and often comes now. I think he is one of the most resolute men I ever saw, and yet the most calm. He seems absolutely imperturbable, imperturbable. I can fancy what a wonderful power he must have over his patients. He has a curious habit of looking one straight in the face, as if trying to read one's thoughts. He tries this on very much with me, but I flatter myself he has got a tough nut to crack. I know that from my glass. Do you ever try to read your own face? I do. And I can tell you. It is not a bad study. And gives you more trouble than you can well fancy if you have never tried it. He says that I afford him a curious psychological study. And I humbly think I do. I do not, as you know take sufficient interest in dress to be able to describe the new fashions. Dress is a bore. That is slang again, but never mind. Arthur says that every day. There, it is all out, Mina. We have told all our secrets to each other since we were children. We have slept together and eaten together and laughed and cried together. And now, though I have spoken, I would like to speak more. Oh, Mina, couldn't you guess? I love him. I am blushing as I write. 
I think, for, for although I think he loves me, he has not told me so in words. But, O oh Mina, I love him. I love him. There, that does me good. I wish I were with you, dear, sitting by the fire undressing, as we used to sit, and I would try to tell you what I feel. I do not know how I am writing this even to you. I am afraid to stop, or I should tear up the letter. I don't want, and I don't want to stop, for I do so want to tell you all. Let me hear from you at once, and tell me all that you think about it. Mina, pray for my happiness. Lucy. P.S. I need not tell you this is a secret. Good night again. L. Letter Lucy Westerner to Mina Murray. 24 May. My dearest Mina, thanks and thanks and thanks again for your sweet letter. It was so nice to be able to tell you and to have your sympathy. My dear, it never rains, but it pours. How true the old proverbs are. Here am I, who shall be twenty in September, and yet I never had a proposal till today, not a real proposal, and today I had three. Just fancy, three proposals in one day, isn't it awful? I feel sorry really and truly sorry, for two of the poor fellows. Oh, Mina, I am so happy that I don't know what to do with myself. And three proposals. But, for goodness sake, don't tell any of the girls, or they would be getting all sorts of extravagant ideas, and imagining themselves injured and slighted if in their very first day at home, they did not get six at least. Some girls are so vain. You and I, Mina dear, who are engaged and are going to settle down soon, soberly, into old married women, can despise vanity. Well, I must tell you about the three, but you must keep it a secret, dear from everyone except, of course, Jonathan. You will tell him, because I would, if I were in your place, certainly tell Arthur. A woman ought to tell her husband everything. Don't you think so, dear? And I must be fair. Men like women, certainly their wives, to be quite as fair as they are. And women, I am afraid, are not always quite as fair as they should be. Well, my dear, number one came just before lunch. I told you of him, Dr. John Seward, the lunatic asylum man with the strong jaw and the good forehead. He was very cool outwardly, but was nervous all the same. He had evidently been schooling himself as to all sorts of little things, and remembered them, but he almost managed to sit down on his silk hat, which men don't generally do when they are cool, and then when he wanted to appear at ease he kept playing with a lancet in a way that made me nearly scream. He spoke to me, Mina, very straightforwardly. He told me how dear I was to him, though he had known me so little, and what was life what his life would be with me to help him, uh, help and cheer him. He was going to tell me how unhappy he would be if I did not care for him. But when he saw me cry, he said he was a brute and would not add to my present trouble. We'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care.
and thanks again.